Hey everyone, welcome back. Uh, and right now we are joined by Kim Ludvigsen. Uh, he's actually the founder and CEO of Interpretify, which is probably the coolest interpreting platform software that you could ever use. Um, if you haven't heard of it, go check it out. But they've done some absolutely incredible stuff. We had to have them on the show because we're talking a lot about international events and how can you bring you know more audiences into your events and you know especially with you know more and more companies going global, they're needing to reach their offices in other countries that have different languages now, right? So the, your, what you guys provide as a service is even more imp incredibly important than ever before. Would you it say? Yes, exactly. Uh, thank you, Will. We, uh, we actually democratize uh, simultaneous interpreting. So far, it has been uh, something used uh, mainly by uh, big international organizations, multinational uh, companies. Uh, it has been a very expensive uh, and exclusive service, and we open up this uh, service for everyone to use, also small organizations. And because we cut off, uh, cut out all this uh, uh, cumbersome heavy equipment, mm -hmm. uh, it's not needed. We use standard devices that enables uh, conference organizers to dramatically reduce the overall costs of uh, simultaneous interpreting. Uh, so, uh, you know, you'll probably remember from macroeconomics, when the price of a product goes down, the demand goes up. We experience that. We see how more and more organizations now want simultaneous interpreting at their events. Wow. And so, because everyone who ha has not exactly heard from your guys' platform before, it's all remotely done. Whereas in the past, before, you know, Interpifier was created, you'd have an interpreter in person sitting in a booth somewhere like a couple hundred meters away, right? Whereas now, you, you guys, your software allows it for the translator to be in, a, in their home country. Anywhere in the world, yeah. Uh, traditional equipment, they have these booths, as you correctly say. They should have visual contact with the speaker, so they should, if possible, be in, in the venue hall. Often there's not enough space. Mm. Uh, but with our technology, the interpreters can be, we, can be anywhere in the world. And we use real interpreters. Mm. I need to emphasize that. Uh, High-quality interpreters. And the fact that the interpreters can be Anywhere in the world means that the conference organizers can pick, can pick the best suited interpreters wherever they come from in the world. Wow. So cool. So yes. cool. And I think that's great, too, because then you can also drive costs down. You don't have flights. You, don't have, uh, you talked a lot about visas before the show. All this, the like, headaches you used to have when you had to bring interpreters in, now you, all that's gone. Now it's literally a camera and an audio feed sent to them, and then it comes back as an audio feed. And then exactly. And you have the interpreters. You, of course, you always need to pay the interpreters, mm -hmm. um, but uh, they can work from their office, from home, wherever they want to work from. Uh, so, yeah, you get a lot of flexibility. So cool. Okay, so for one event, though, you guys, um, I heard it was like a record-breaking number of interpreters that you guys have had. Can you explain what that was and how many interpreters was this? Yeah, you think about the Google event in, yep, in Pasadena? Yep, yep. Yeah. Yes, that uh, I think this uh, is a world um, record. It, it definitely is, and we also um, contacted Guinness Books of Records, but for some reason they, they couldn't uh, record it as a record. But anyway, nobody in the world has ever had 102 interpreters, 102, 102 interpreters interpreting one event. Wow. That's crazy. And um, it, what made it have so many interpreters um, across the entire event? Yeah, it was not uh, uh, 51 in uh, booths <laughs> with dif 51 uh, different languages. I can't even name 51 yeah. different languages. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. It was. Uh, there were breakout sessions. There was a plenary session, and uh, I think with eight or nine languages. And then they had, um, uh, I think it was nine or ten uh, breakout sessions between four to eight cool. languages each. So that all added up to 102. And then on wow. top of it, we had uh, 35 technicians uh, helping, supporting, guiding the interpreters online. Wow. What, what's um, a big challenge that people won't think of when it comes to translating their entire event, all their breakout rooms, all their general sessions, everything like that? What's a big challenge they don't really think about? Well, I mean, you, you need to coordinate everything, and there are some additional um, challenges when you um, have the everybody remote. 
you need to sort of prepare everything very well. You need how to, um, you know, reach people, get in contact with them. You cannot just walk up and, and uh, you know, if the, an interpreter falls asleep in the booth, you can go and, and knock on the window. Uh, here we, we have other uh, means. Uh, but, it, it of course, it, it needs a very sort of tight organization to control and monitor and support all these interpreters. Awesome. That's awesome. Um, for someone who's looking at adding multiple languages to their events, what's your biggest tip for them for when it comes to doing this, other than using Interpreter, obviously, or considering remote broadcast? What would be like a tip that you'd have if someone's looking to bring in, you know, a bunch of interpreters into their event? Well, how they should do it, or why they should do it? Uh, maybe like a tip for how they can how they can do it better, uh, like a tactical tip for you know, for example, I like I'll, I'll give an example. Is I know that when we do our events, you. A lot of interpreters are craving the content ahead of time. Yeah, so yeah. I was just, I was just, yeah, uh, I yeah. just thought of that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes, that was just what I came into my mind. Uh, as always, the better you can uh, help the interpreters to prepare, the better they work. Mm -hmm. Obviously, so so. But that counts for that it's on site or uh, remote interpreting. The interpreters appreciate very much when they can get the presentation materials or the manuscripts in advance. So that is definitely uh, one thing, and and also um, you know give them time to prepare um, when there are short term uh, changes. You know, inform them, keep them in, informed. Awesome. So yeah, that I would say that's the that's in the. I love it. Things. Um and. For anyone who's looking at uh, maybe adding translation to a public event, what are your kind of order of languages? Obviously, does it depend on market for where you need to fit within for like what languages you think that need to be hit and always covered first? So, for example, it seems like Spanish is like one of the big ones, right? Um, what sort of languages do you and how does someone choose what languages should be translated? Okay, like you're obviously talking about uh, North America. Yeah, yeah, sure. Let's talk yeah, about North America. Uh, uh, U.S., and U.S. And, that's and obviously it flips. Very much Spanish. Of course, we, in that case, the, the as you say, public events, uh, we, our strength is you, we have uh, both like an open token, so the organizer does not control who attends. Most uh, RSI platforms, you need to register, so they need to have mm -hmm. everybody registered, which is called also can be an advantage. Also with our platform, we have um, a, you know dual registration where people are registered. But when you say public event, it's like you make an invitation, you don't know who's coming. Yeah, sure. Yeah, in yeah. that case, uh, of course, we talk to the interpreter and they need to sort of estimate who, who will be coming, how many languages do you need. And the advantage with our platform is you can, you know, you can organize interpreters and and they don't have to be there if you don't need them, you know, like, mm -hmm. like, like UN events. For, I'll give you an example. UN events, uh, they have very strict hours they can work. And, you know, many big international conferences, they uh, continue in the evening and, might, and also into the night. And, and they need to have several backup teams. And most, uh, mostly they don't need them, but for the in case that, you know, the conference keeps on during night time, mm. they need to have these backup teams. And with us, with remote simultaneous interpreter, you can, you can organize it short term. You have much more flexibility. If you suddenly need additional languages, we can almost uh, within hours set up. Well, we can set up it within minutes Oh. Everything you need for additional languages, but you still need to find to the interpreters, interpreters. Yeah, yeah. and and that we can do um, sometimes very very quickly. Totally, totally. The, the usual you know languages. Awesome. I, I definitely like. I mean, um, whenever working with interpreters, I realize that not every interpreter is perfect too. You know, you can definitely do everything you can to prepare, but you know, sometimes you know, they might not be able to keep up the pace of the content, or they might not understand the content. Do you have any sort of tips for? Um, planners for vetting interpreters to make sure that they're ready, set, and ready to go so that it's a flawless event? Well, you already mentioned the most important thing um, that they um, study or they prepare the topic. I mean, most inter interpreters are very, um, you know, have a strong interest, want to, you know, provide a good good service, so they prepare themselves. We need to help them, like, getting the documentation 
that kind of stuff. And when they work on our platform, we give them a training. Um, we have like various training programs. We have a standard training of 45 minutes for interpreters, so they get uh, accustomed to our platform and they feel comfortable. And uh, the we are very dependent on on happy interpreters because the the more comfortable they feel, they feel the the better they uh, better they perform. Totally. Absolutely. And then one last question for you. What's something that you think that everybody in our audience needs to know? Like something that you want to share about maybe something either exciting that you guys are working on or a tip that you think that no one's thinking of? I'm going to give you kind of an open platform to talk about anything that you want. Well, I think that conference organizers should really uh, um, realize how they can attract a broader audience, uh, uh, broad, uh, delegates from abroad, by providing simultaneous interpreting. And also on top of it, with uh, RSI, you can also have delegates participating, uh, listening from from um, outside the event remotely. Mm. So perhaps people cannot come to the event or, or they don't want to pay the, for the trip. So they can still like now live stream, Absolutely. not only participate, but but also get uh, um, interpreting and and uh, and also speakers can be remote and mm -hmm. and there's one thing I would like to uh, uh, um, mention a lot of companies they have standard uh, webinar um, uh, platforms right like uh, Adobe or Skype or um, whatever they're Go called to meetings Zoom, yeah exactly yeah. and now we have a, like a it's like almost like a module where people where clients can continue using their platform but we put interpreting on top of it so we don't oh. change anything we have of course a webinar uh, platform but a lot of companies they don't want to use a new platform so they continue using their old uh, webinar system and they just pick if they need interpreting they pick their smartphone and choose the interpreter they want to listen to and and that's it so it's a very wow. simple um, solution so there's no excuses for you to be able to bring in multiple languages into your event no excuses anymore i love it i love it well thank you so much kim for being on the show and uh sharing a little bit of your knowledge and sharing the cool case study of the 102 interpreters it's just mind-blowing to me that many people and i mean you said the next closest one was something like 50 or 60 yeah maybe. nato events with wow. 60 interpreters wow, yeah. that's crazy so well thank you so much kim for being on event icons and uh stay tuned for a little bit more content as uh, we continue the day along good thank you will